Now, since I posted this picture of my, I think, 2001 Maxima with this 75 meter station installed, and uh, I had this thing available for my car probably from 2003 up through maybe 2011, that time frame. I probably have used it, oh, 25 or 30 times in the car. I used to take trips all the way uh, from here in southern New Hampshire, Boston area, up to northern New York on the Canadian border. So, you know, with like a six-hour drive, it gives you something to do in the car. And really, 75 meters is my favorite mobile band. Um, a lot of fun in the car on 75 a.m., if you uh, time your trip correctly, you can get good, uh, you know, short skip type operation in the morning and in the late afternoon. So it works out nicely. Usually dead from 10 a.m. through, you know, 2 or 3 p.m., but that's fine. And uh, I've had a lot of questions about this station. You know, that picture draws a lot of questions from people. Just seeing a couple of command sets in the car is exciting enough, but uh, there especially has been interest in how I powered the station, how much power it puts out, and how I modulated it. And really, the receiver and the transmitter are not stock, so I'm not running it like some people have in mobile operation, where they actually collect all of the proper cables and trays, run it on a dynamotor and put a couple batteries in the trunk in order to run the whole station and run those big heavy cables uh, through their vehicle. I wanted something that I could mount on a piece of plywood and carry it out to the car and just lean it on the front seat and uh, really just hook up the power supply and I would be on the air using the car's regular power system, 12 volts. So. This is an easy in, easy out type station for 75 meter AM in the vehicle. So going uh, from left to right, this is the BC 454 command set receiver. And this particular receiver has been modified um, it has both an RF gain control and a separate audio gain control. It's got uh, a switch for the BFO, and it has an added noise limiter switch. So this guy has been heavily modified inside, and it's got a, uh, a noise blanking system built into it. On top is the Q multiplier system for the IF of the BC-454. I found that the Q multiplier is the single most important device to making AM mobile operation possible. It really, really exalts the AM signal when you're in the presence of vehicle noise. So this is a Q multiplier, and you can't see in the back, but there is a 12 AT7 back there, a dual triode tube and it's mounted horizontal. In the middle I have the speaker with a built-in transformer and I've got uh, current uh, for, the, uh, for the plate. Uh, there's a spot switch which turns the oscillator portion of the transmitter on and allows you to uh, set the receiver. The spinner dial is missing. I probably should have mounted that on there so you could see it. And this is the power on-off switch, which actuates a relay and starts everything uh, running, including the DC power supply, which is a converted Heathkit mobile supply. And the Heathkit supplies, you might remember, make basically 800 volts and uh, 200 or 300 volts DC. It's been modified so that the 800 volts is more like 420 volts. And I did that by converting the voltage doubler system in the Heath kit to a full wave bridge, which of course halves the voltage and doubles the current, 
which is just, just what you want for AM operation. However, with only 400 volts available for the plate of the transmitter, the output of this system is very limited. It's only putting out about 23 or 24 watts. But that relieves the pressure on this solid state modulator. The solid state modulator down here, and this is the mic gain control, it basically is a uh, transistorized system. It uses the LM380, but so this is a push to talk system. There is a relay back there for PTT. Uh, drives a backward transistorized transformer that drives a pair of IRF840 MOSFETs in push pull and they go right into the 6.3 volt center tapped secondary of a 5 amp filament transformer. The primary side, the 120 volt side, is the actual modulation side of that system. However, I do not burden that transformer with DC. I used a modified Heising system with a separate choke uh, to, uh, to do the modulation for the command set. So I'm using a modified Heising solid state modulator. It puts out about 15 watts and that's plenty enough to modulate the transmitter. The transmitter itself is the BC696 command set. It's been modified with a Pi network output using the roller inductor and a 50 ohm connector has been put on this transmitter. This is the filament transformer, the 5 amp 6.3 volt center tap filament transformer that I'm using as the modulation iron. This is a Johnson modulation transformer that I'm just using the primary as a choke. The Johnson transformer is just acting as a choke for the modified Heising and this is the modified Heising capacitor. As you can see it all fits on one board that can easily be transported. You guys know that the command sets basically have uh, two 1625 tubes inside which are equivalent to 807s driven by a Hartley oscillator uh, directly. So it's a very simple master oscillator power amplifier type transmitter. Now people have been known to run these at powers as high as 50 or 60 or 70 watts input power and uh, you know with really high voltage on them and successfully modulated them in the car. I've done nothing of the sort. I'm running it at a much lower power, probably around the 30 watt input power level. So the modulator uses the famous LM380 2.5 watt mono chip amplifier. This was a very popular chip back in the 80s and uh, it drives a transistor style push-pull output transformer. Basically run backwards. The low impedance side is on the LM380 side that would normally drive a speaker and the push-pull side which normally would come off a couple of bipolar transistors. That guy is driving the gates of two uh, IRF840 MOSFETs in push-pull. Then on the output of the uh, 840s we have a push-pull transformer made of a 6.3 volt center tapped 5 amp filament transformer run backwards. The center tap 6.3 volts goes to the uh, to the drains of both of those IRF 840s and then the output is uh, the modulation output which is normally the 117 volt AC input to the transformer. Now I am running modified Heising meaning um, I go through a capacitor and I run the DC that goes to the ARC-5, the high voltage DC, through a high value choke. So it's just AC power that's going into that choke through the capacitor. This relieves the, the 6.3 volt filament transformer from having the DC through its core, thus saturating it early. It also boosts the low end. So this is a trick called modified Heising that both improves the low end and relieves the transformer of having the DC saturation current going through it. Instead it just has the AC voltage 
uh, developed at the 117 volt terminals. So that's how I'm able to modulate the ARC-5 with just uh, a single chip and two transistors. I would like to talk about my ARC-5 mobile modulator. As you can see, I started playing with this circuit back in 1992, but I really used it in the late 90s, early 2000s. That's when I actually got the mobile ARC-5 system on the air in the car. So it, uh, of course, starts with the Shure 527 amplified mic. This is a dynamic element and a transistorized preamp. And uh, this guy is really overkill. You could probably use any dynamic microphone. I think you'd have enough gain with the LM380. Uh, if not, then add one stage of transistor amplification on your microphone. So the bias comes over. This is 12 volts. comes over and uh, goes right into the microphone. The audio from the mi amplified microphone goes into a mic gain potentiometer right up front. And then we have what looks like a giant op amp, really, because we set the feedback from the output transformer all the way back to the input of the LM380, much like you do with an op amp circuit. This uh, flattens out the two pieces of iron that we have. We have a small transistor output transformer that you might have in uh, some of your old transistor radios and these drove that little 3 to 5 inch uh, speaker in your transistor set. Of course the bigger the better on this transformer but it doesn't have to be anything special because you're just driving the gates of these two IRF840 end channel MOSFETs in uh, traditional push-pull. Now the LM380 is a 2.5 watt uh, output amplifier and uh, you do need to put some loading on the output to keep it settled down and you need to have good bypassing on it so it doesn't oscillate. Uh, this uh, potentiometer here sets the bias for the 840s to put them into class AB push-pull. A couple of protective diodes on the uh, drain to source on each one of them. There's nothing really exotic here. This is just a straight ahead push-pull modulator. Now I'm using a 6.3 volt 5 amp uh, transformer that just happened to act beautifully as a modulation transformer. Will all of them act good? Probably. I would think they all would. And uh, the feedback straightens out the uh, any kinks that might be in the audio response of your audio transformer. But uh, try several transformers and see which one gives you the best audio. Now in order that this transformer uh, operates well and we're able to get enough power out to modulate the ARC-5, I wanted to relieve it of having any DC going through the secondary. Well this secondary is actually the 120 volt primary of the transformer. So the way I'm doing that is I'm using a Heising, modified Heising setup. So only AC comes out here and the DC part of it is taken care of through this 10 to 20 Henry 200 milliamp choke. Again, bigger is better with both of these pieces of iron. I have a uh, power supply of only 450 volts DC that was made out of an old Heathkit mobile power supply with the voltage doubler converted to a full wave bridge. And I'm using the traditional three diode negative cycle loading WA1 QIX circuit. The keep alive voltage should be between 1 tenth and 1 20th of whatever voltage you put in here. So I'm using 36 volts as a keep alive voltage. This is what uh, keeps you off uh, going through zero on your negative cycle. The three diode uh, circuit is pretty standard and it worked well with the ARC-5. So again, a modulator to modulate the ARC-5 at a modest probably 12 watt uh, output audio in order to handle maybe 25 watts input power with the ARC-5 with a simple 13.8 volts right from the car uh, power system. So if you're running more power with your ARC-5 then this probably needs to be increased and of course you could run a 24 volt DC to DC converter in the car and 24 volts would give you more power out of this system. 
again, don't be afraid to upsize the iron, and I think you'll be very happy with this very simple ARC-5 mobile modulator.